Hello and welcome here to Talking CB and welcome back to the channel here for another video and today we're going to be doing something slightly different. We're not going to be talking transfers, we're going to be talking La Masia, La Masia graduates and players that could possibly appear in the first team over the coming season. Now that's a really, really important thing because of course we love to discuss these big transfers, we like to talk about players who might be coming into the club but it's important as well to remember our roots and to remember the players that are working so hard in our youth teams to make the grade at Barcelona and to give those a chance as well to prove themselves because although it's great when a signing comes in and impresses it feels so much more special and it feels so much better especially at Barcelona when a young player comes through La Masia comes through the B team and then makes his debut and impresses and grows in the team it's brilliant to watch it's fantastic to experience as a fan and that's what we want to see in the coming season and I do believe that under Valverde we will see more of the youth team product so we're going to be having a look at five players today who may well step up to the first team in the coming season and we're going to have a look exactly what they could bring. So basically this relates to an article posted in the Spanish media which basically said that the five players that I'm about to show you will have some impact under Valverde in the coming season. So all of these players do have the chance to step up this season and according to the report in Spain, Valverde will give them the chance over the coming season to make themselves heroes at Barcelona. Number one, Sergi Samper. Now of all the five players that I'm going to mention, Sergi Samper is by far the most well-known player. We all know of him, we've all heard of him and he's also the oldest player of the five that I'm going to go through. 22 years old now, Sergi Samba. It seems like only yesterday he was coming out of Barcelona B, but since then he's come a long way. He came through La Masia. He started out there in 2001. He made his Barca B debut in 2013. He was there for three years. He was an outstanding player for Barcelona B, very much a regular in their team. Then he came up to the first team. He made his Champions League debut, though, back in 2014 against Apoel Nicosia. And then he made his La Liga debut under Luis Enrique in 2016 against Hitafe but then unfortunately he didn't quite do enough to convince Luis Enrique or more so Luis Enrique didn't feel like he deserved his place in the first team whatever reasoning that was for that and basically the decision was made to send uh, Sergi Samper on loan to Granada for last season so from 2016 to 17 Samper was on loan at Granada and I do think now looking back on it of course that does now look like a very bad move they got relegated their team is full of players who were on loan who were of different nationalities they didn't really stick together as a team they didn't really fight throughout the season and they got relegated it was a horrible season for everybody connected with Granada Football Club but at the start of the season it looked a bit different for them because they had Paco Jemez in charge. We sent Samper there because we thought that Jemez would play, you know, attractive football. It would be the type of football that Samper could thrive under. But unfortunately for us, Paco Jemez was sacked within weeks at Granada, so it was replaced by a new coach. And ever since that moment, Samper never really got going. He never really had that flow in his play. He never really felt confident at Granada. And unfortunately for him, I do see last season very much, unfortunately, as a season wasted for him. He didn't really progress in the way we wanted it to. He made 22 La Liga appearances across the season. But unfortunately, towards the end of his spell with Granada, uh, they actually started to leave him out of the team because they didn't want to pay the appearance fee that they had to pay Barcelona every Every time he played so towards the end of the season he didn't play at all so pretty disappointing for him but the positive is that Valverde has said to Samper, you are going to come back to Barcelona and you are going to be there the first day of pre-season on July the 12th I want you there and I want to see what you can do so Samper will return to Barcelona he'll come in for the pre-season and from July the 12th onwards he will have the opportunity to prove himself to Valverde and to prove that he can be the man who can play as a substitute for Sergio Busquets throughout next season because that's what we've been craving for already we don't really have a player in the squad who's actually very well suited to the position that Busquets plays you know he's trying to put Mascherano there in recent years it hasn't really worked out Andre Gomez was put in that role a few times last season and didn't do too badly but Sampa really is the heir to Busquets is thrown if he can thrive on that sort of pressure if you like if he can step up to the plate and show that he can do it and he can express that quality that we've seen from him in his Barca B days so it was a disappointing season last season for Sergi Samper but certainly next season he'll have his chance to impress Valverde and for him and for his sake as well I really really do hope that he takes it so that's number one 
Number two would be Carlos Alenia. So he is going to come in uh, for next season, apparently. He was used sporadically by Luis Enrique. He was called up to a number of squads in the first team, 19 years old. Um, he was first introduced to La Masia in 2005. He was promoted to Barcelona B in 2015. So he's had a bit of a fast track to the first team. He hasn't spent an awful lot of time in Barca B before Luis Enrique felt that he was ready to make his step up to the Barcelona first team. He made his debut in the Copa del Rey in 2016. And then he went on to make his La Liga debut in April. April of this year against Granada. He made three La Liga appearances in all last season, but only totaling 40 minutes in total that he had game time. And basically, if you haven't seen Alain, if you haven't seen too much of him, he's certainly an exciting player. I think he's one of the most exciting players on this list. He's a creative midfield player who can play in a three in midfield. He's quite comfortable playing in that creative role in a three. Uh, he's got such a low centre of ground. That's what I like about him. He's not um, he's not a traditional sort of creative player. He does he does like to dribble. He does like to to take the play on for himself. You know, I don't want to start saying he's like Messi, he's like Iniesta, but he does have a low centre of gravity and he's very very comfortable on the ball. It sort of sticks to him like glue at times. His dribbles. He's got some very very nice touches in his time with the first team this season. We did see flashes of his quality. We saw some nice touches. We saw him being confident. And that's good. That's all we want from players. We want them to show that quality in Barcelona B. And then when they come up to the first team, we just want them to carry on doing what they've been doing. Show that confidence and show that confidence in your own ability when you come up to the first team. They just need to keep doing what they've been doing, what they've been taught as a young player. Because they've clearly got the quality, these guys. They've got the quality to come up and show it. And we just need them to keep doing what they're doing. But yeah, he's certainly a player that could come into our midfield and be confident be comfortable on the ball which is so important in that midfield for Barcelona it's so important that you can be comfortable on the ball you can receive it you can move it and you're not afraid to receive the ball in any position and Alenia is not afraid of that so he's certainly one to keep an eye on because he's a player that's certainly impressed over the last few years in Barca B and last season as well when he was given his opportunity in the first team Number three, another player that we saw towards the end of last season, Luis Enrique, decided to show some faith in young centre-back Marlon, 21 years old. And he's a centre-back that, that, to be fair, he hasn't actually come through La Masia, so he's a bit of a cheat one. He um, he came in last summer from Fluminense in Brazil. He came in on loan originally from the Brazilian club. He played for Barca B throughout the uh, the start of the season. There was a lot of trouble, actually, with his paperwork. Whether he could play in La Liga or not wasn't really decided until after Christmas. So he only started appearing for Barca towards the end of last season. But this summer, we have actually purchased him on a permanent basis, around €5 million, Euros, the total fee to a really good deal to bring in Marlon. He's just under six foot tall, so he's not the tallest of centre-backs, but he's certainly one that moves very, very well, much like Samuel Antetti. He's not the tallest either, and Mascherano as well, of course. They're not the tallest, but they move very, very well, and they read the game really, really well. That's important. Uh, but he featured heavily for Barca B uh, last season, 22 appearances in all. He made his Barca debut officially in the Champions League in November of 2016, because his paperwork wasn't an issue for Champions League related matches, um, and he did make two two La Liga appearances at the end of last season and he did impress to be fair I remember the game at the Camp Nou where he made his Barcelona first team debut in the league and his first touch, literally the first touch that he had, the ball was passed to him. He was being closed down by the opposition striker. And he just, he did a little flick and he turned the striker and it was brilliant. You know, the first touch of a, a player making his debut at the camp now and he's got the audacity and the confidence to take on the striker being a centre-back. He does look like that player who's very, very confident in himself and he's very, very good on the ball as well. So that's important for a Barcelona centre-back. You need to be able to defend, of course. You need to be able to attack the ball, head the ball, tackle. But he's good on the ball. Um, so like, hopefully next season we get to see more of Marlon whether or not we bring in another centre back this summer is so far not clear but if we don't Marlon certainly could make the step up and Valverde may look to count on him for the coming season now the next player is one that has aroused very much um a lot of talk this summer and last season, of course, when Luis Enrique controversially decided that he didn't want to place any trust in Sergi Palencia. The 21-year-old uh, started out in La Masia in 2006. He made his Barca B debut in 2015 and has been there ever since. He's very much an ever-present at Barcelona B, competing in nearly every game as long as he's fit. He's actually the captain now of Barcelona B. He's yet to actually make his official first-team debut for Barcelona. He's made 35 appearances for Barca B this season. 
I think everybody in general, really, especially given our problems at right back, was so, so surprised that Luis Enrique didn't at least try once Sergi Palencia. So it's a big surprise he hasn't been called up yet, but that call up is not very far away at all. It is rumoured that Valverde is certainly looking to have a look at him. He's going to see what he can do. And from what I've led to believe and what I've seen of him in Barcelona, B, he does look like a player who can come up and really make an impact. Whether he's ready to sort of be our right back instead of signing a new one is unyet clear. I think it would be best if we signed a new right back and also promoted or certainly used a bit more Sergi Palencia to bring him in, to develop him, to sort of ease him into the first team set. You don't want to throw him in at the deep end and, you know, you want to put too much pressure on him. But he's a very, very good all-round right back. He's, he's very good going forward. He's got some good pace. He's good on the ball and he's pretty decent in the final third as well. But the most important thing for me, he can defend as well. He's not somebody who can just bomb forward and he's got nothing going the other way. He's good defensively. He's pretty decent in the air. He's, he's got a good physique about him. You know, he's not some of these guys who are going to come up from Barca B and be bullied. He's got a good physique. He's strong on the ball. He's good in the air. So certainly he can come up and make an impact. And I really do believe that Valverde next season will certainly show a bit more faith in him than Luis Enrique did. And we can see more of him certainly in the coming season. And the final player, number five, would be Alex Carbonell. He's 19 years old. Uh, he joined Masi La Masia very, very young. 2003, he joined La Masia. Um, he made 22 appearances last season for Barca B. He scored two goals in that period. Um, he made his Barcelona first team debut in 2016 in November in the Copa del Rey against Hercules in one of the early rounds. He's an attacking midfielder. Uh, he's one that actually does actually like to play a bit more further forward. He has played in a false nine role in some of the underage teams for Barcelona and for Spain as well. Um, and he, he's very, very good on the ball. Like a lot of players that come out of Barcelona, be that they're sort of coached so intently on, on ball possession and, and the retention of the ball. They're all so good on the ball. But clearly, you know, he can play in more advanced positions. He's quite versatile across that midfield. He can play in a three as well. Like I mentioned, he can play false nine. We've also seen him play in a wider midfield role. He, he's played Played a few times under Luis Enrique, but not very often at all. He's got a good eye for a pass. He's comfortable in possession. He likes to receive the ball in the midfield areas and then try and break the lines ahead of him. So he's certainly, again, a player that, that Valverde will look at, given the, the problems that we've had in midfield in recent years. He might be one to come and have a few more games. He might cheer the game time with Carlos Elena. So it's going to be interesting to see which of these players Valverde chooses to put a bit of faith in. It may be Copa del Rey matches. It might be Champions League matches when things are and not so pressurised in the group stages, or it might be La Liga games where we need a bit of rotation and Valverde puts his trust in some of the younger guys. But like I say, that's what we all want to see. As Barcelona fans, we want to see us promoting from within. We want to see our own players get a bit of game time and get a bit of confidence back in the youth setup. So let me know down below, guys, the players that you're excited about. If there's anyone I haven't mentioned so far, I basically just stuck with the five players that were mentioned in that report that Valverde said that he would be trusting in come the coming season. So leave your thoughts down below, guys. Guys, who do you like the look of? Who are you most excited to see? And who do you feel out of these five that could be of most influence in our squad next season? I'll look forward to hearing your thoughts. As always, guys, I'll see you very, very soon. But until next time, as always, Vesca El Barça. Barça.